Probably one of my best looks going forward. The Bucks, plus one. The Sharps were on uh, three. And the Jags, totals 48 and a half. And there's a slight move to the under from 49, Donny. You know what? I actually like the over in this football game. I, I think there's a decent shot at this because we're seeing the Jacksonville Jaguars defense flash that over the past couple of years, you leaned on that team. You leaned on a running game. You had Blake Bortles, a quarterback, but it was fun. They made it all the way to the AFC title game. This is really a shell of that on defense. There's still a lot of players from that football team that are here, but obviously something's just not clicking. The one thing I think Nick Foles got into a little bit of a rhythm last week, even though they got blown out, I think the offense is going to be able to move the football, obviously, against a Tampa Bay defense, but vice versa. I think Tampa Bay is going to be able to move it as well. Now, looking at some of these early windy conditions here, 17, 18, 19 miles an hour. I'm going to keep an eye on that early in the week, but setting up to the high 40s, I think this game can creep into the 50s because I think Bruce Arians has this offense clicking. They'll be able to put up points. And I think vice versa, Nick Foles and that Jacksonville Jaguars offense should be able to strike as well as looking at a game itself. Kind of tough. I mean, minus one, minus one and a half. Jacksonville should be able to win this game. But if anything, since Nick Foles especially got back in, I saw, oh, you know, Gardner Mitchell was four and four. Nick Foles stinks. Well, if you're giving up, you know, 40 points close to a game on defense, I don't care what quarterback you have starting a quarterback. You're not going to win any of those football games. I do think that malaise on defense is going to continue, which Tampa Bay can exploit. I like the over here early in the week here, Flash, unless those windy conditions keep up down there in Jacksonville. Yeah, I would, uh, I would strongly recommend you, uh, you keep your eyes peeled to weather.com because it's going to be massively important in this game when they both sets of the core, both sets of the attacking side of the field want to get the ball in the air. I look at the game and I go, Winston. Well, he looked unbelievable the other day against the Falcons, but he could be the Jags' best form of offense as well, Well, wow. <laughs> You're absolutely right. <laughs> You're right. Uh, I I uh, I I think that's a great call. And obviously, Winston will throw two picks. It's just a matter of whether he throws them in the red zone and takes points off the board for the Bucks, or if he throws them in his own half and he sets the Jags up for easy points. Um, that makes the total a very difficult handicap for me. And as far as the side goes, I would have expected the Bucks to be small favorites here as opposed to uh, short dogs. And I'm surprised because I've seen a lot of players come in on the Bucks, but that number is staying put with the Jags as small favorites, which means there's some resistance out there. Someone has a bead, someone has a read, someone has an angle on Jaguars, and I'm not sure I can figure out what it is. When I look at the Jaguars, they are leaning heavily on their rushing attack. Leonard Fournette is going to have absolutely nowhere to go against this, I guess this Bucks uh, run defense, which is absolutely stellar. If you're going to attack and make the, J the Bucks hurt, you're going to do it through the air. And I'm not sure we're seeing much chemistry at all from Nick Foles and his receiving core in a way that's going to really put scoreboard pressure on the Bucks. The Bucks, on the other hand, their strength is obviously through the passing game. They have dynamic set of wide receivers with Evans and, uh, and Godwin. And the Jags can defend the pass well, but they really only have one guy in, in uh, A.J. Bouye, who can really cover and take away that, uh, you know, those tight, you know, create tight passing windows, which means whichever guy Bouye is not on, Winston should be able to read and find that guy and get the ball to him and let him make plays in the passing game. So I feel like this, you know, this, this, this uh, sets up well for the Bucks to get a win here. Um, I feel like the over ought to be in play, um, but there's enough uncertainty with the way that Winston's turning the ball over at will this season that I'm going to stay away from this game. Well, you've got a good feel there because we've got Clint Richardson saying the Bucks are now minus one. We've got Pie Guy saying on my book, we've got Jags minus one. The books have not got a clue. And come Sunday, it's eyes down and, well, they can have the minus one. It'll end up being a pick -em. It'll end up being a pick -em. I, I quite like the, uh, the scoring prowess of the Bucks, especially after they've just left their mark on my behind from the Falcons game last week.